Tibetans are old and ancient culture. And it is rich in language, in dance, in song, music, in writing, in arts, in crafts. And it is unique. It is a unique civilization, idolized, talked about, and always have been very mysterious for people for many centuries. Today, in the general population of the world, if people associate Tibet, they automatically associate it with the lamas, or the Tibetan masters and the teachers and the saints, ascetics, the mahasiddhas, the great monasteries such as Ganden and Drepung, Sera, Trashilumpo, Gyute, Gyume, and they indelibly associate Tibet with His Holiness, the 14 Dalai Lama. In Tibet, and His Holiness, the Dalai Lama, is inseparable and very much connected. Due to the Tibetan, Tibetans moving to many parts of the world, to many countries and to different cultures, it is still known for its religion. It's still known for its ancient science of the mind. Because living, Tibetans living in isolation for over a thousand years has its advantage and disadvantage. And I'd like to mention that the advantage was because of its geographical isolation, it was very much able to perfect all the teachings of the Lord Buddha from all forms, from Sutrayana and Tantrayana completely. And Tibet has developed past and present and will develop many great erudite masters and teachers. And Tibetan Buddhism is well known all over the world, being embraced by thousands and thousands and thousands of people yearly. And <clears throat> I heard it's the fastest growing religion in the United States. So therefore, there's a reason for this. There are many reasons, but I'd like to mention some of the top reasons. The first time I met His Holiness, the 14th Dalai Lama, was in Howell, New Jersey. Howell, New Jersey, which is a couple of hours away from Trenton, the capital of New Jersey. And um, that's where I grew up. And he came to the Mongolian Kalmyk temple there called Rashi Jembaling. And the abbot there was his eminence the great Sarah May Abbot Emeritus, Kensa Rimchi Jesen Losan Tarchinla, who was an erudite master, a great abbot of Sarah May Monastic University, a scholar, a practitioner, a living yogi, who, when we stayed around him and observed him, can find no faults whatsoever. I received my first teachings and I received my first practices, all from this great master, whose name I find very difficult to mention, whose kindness to me I can never forget. He was a Tibetan master living among the Mongolians there. The Mongolians are known as Kalmyks. And the adopted family that I lived with were Kalmyks, Kalmyk Mongolian people. And so they had a few temples there, and one of the temples was called Rashi Jambaling, where they had a lot of images and statues and tankas and very beautiful items that they had brought over from their homeland, which is a Russian repu republic, which is called Kalmykia. And these Kalmyk Mongolian people, 
traveled over to the United States in World War II as refugees and reestablished their culture and reestablished the 14 Dalai Lama to visit Howell, New Jersey, to visit our temple there, Rashi Jambalin. Rashi Jambalin, Nitsan, and Baran Horu. There was three temples in that vicinity, all belonging to the Catholic Mongols. And in North Jersey, in Washington, New Jersey, there was um, Geshe Wangyal, a Mongolian scholar, master Geshe from Drepung, his meditation retreat center in Washington, New Jersey, who coincided together with our master and invited His Holiness the Dalai Lama to visit Howell, New Jersey and Washington, New Jersey. Needless to say, it was one of the most incredible moments of my life. It was one of the most exciting moments of my life. It was one of the most looked four moments of my life because I remember although I was 11 years old I was very very excited and even when I think about it now I'm very excited His Holiness the Dalai Lama is a dream for all Mongolians to see his golden face just once there's a saying in Mongolian to see the golden face of the Dalai Lama once before one passes away will ensure that one doesn't take rebirth in the three lower realms. That is how much faith the Mongolian people have in him. My mother's heritage is Mongolian, is Kalmyk Mongolian of the Turgut tribe. My father's heritage is Tibetan from Golok, Tibet. And my father was a monk before, and he gave back his robes, and he had a family, and he resided in Taiwan. This is where I was born. I was born in Taiwan and then adopted over to the United States. So anyways, when we heard the announcement that His Holiness was coming, it was incredible. It was just incredible. And um, lots of preparations. The Mongolians from the tri-state area, which is Pennsylvania, Philadelphia, New York, and New Jersey, all gathered to wait for the arrival of His Holiness. And I remember being tremendously excited. So. Already a few weeks before we were set to meet His Holiness, I had painted a picture of the four-armed Avalokiteshvara. I painted it myself, I drew it, I painted it, and on the back of this picture, I wrote a prayer beseeching His Holiness to live long, that his activities will grow, and I composed the prayer in my own little childlike mind that I can never be separated from His Holiness in this life and future lives. And what was incredible is when he, I prepared that. I prepared that gift because I was a kid. I didn't have any money. I didn't have anything else to prepare or to offer to His Holiness. And I wanted to make a connection. So when His Holiness came, we were so blessed. He came to Rashi Jambalin Temple. And we all went to receive His blessings. It was so crowded. There were so many people. There was reporters. There was TV stations. It was just incredible. This was back in 1976, his first visit. After that, His Holiness went to the north, to Washington, New Jersey, where Geshe Wangyal, the great Mongolian master, Geshe Wangyal has a large retreat center and large piece of land on a hill because Washington, New Jersey is set at the tail end of the Appalachian Mountains, which is the eastern chain of mountains in the United States. So North Jersey was quite hilly, have waterfalls and very pleasant and very green and uh, mountainous. So his center was on a mountain with an artificial lake. And his, he, Geshe Wangyal had a beautiful place set up for him and beautiful altar and a fabulous, wonderful outdoor throne, dais, and sitting area to receive his holiness's teachings. So the Mongolians chartered three large buses and we all took a journey to Washington, New Jersey. I can't remember. It's a few hours ride, two, three hours, because I was quite young, around 11. And we went up to Washington, New Jersey. And just before His Holiness came out to sit on the throne, a very beautiful light rain appeared. And then a rainbow appeared. I was there. It was very bright, and a rainbow appeared. And then out came His Holiness, walking past throngs of people. And wow. And we sat down. His Holiness sat down. We prostrated. And, he, and His Holiness proceeded to give us teachings on the eight verses of thought transformation by Langri Tangpa, Geshe Langri Tangpa. And it was the first time I've ever heard of those teachings. 
but it made a tremendous impact on me. Number one, I revere His Holiness tremendously. And I revere, I've revered Him and have great faith in His Holiness my whole life, even up till now. And so to receive the eight verses of thought transformation, in my mind, I thought He is Avalokiteshvara. Of course, I can't explain that to other people or to the scientists or to the educated people, but that's what I believe, and I still believe that. That His Holiness is Avalokiteshvara. And I thought, to receive teachings that are on mind transformation and changing of the mind from Avalokiteshvara himself, how auspicious that is, I thought to myself. And so the teachings for about three, three and a half hours, it was incredible because I received, we received all the teachings on the eight verses and the oral transmission from His Holiness. And he also gave us the oral transmission of the mantra, O Mani Peme Hong. And he encouraged us to recite the eight verses of thought transformation along with the mantra. And believe me, I did it. I recited that every day as His Holiness had taught us to. And after the teachings with His Holiness, we were so blessed because although there are thousands of people there, thousands, His Holiness stood up by where His residence was up there in the retreat center, in Geshe Wangel's place, together with Geshe Wangel, and he greeted each one of us. And it took hours and hours and hours to meet every single person, but we did. We actually got up there. We were able to touch His Holiness's hands. We were able to receive a red blessing string that he had blessed, and I tied around my neck. I never took off. And I personally got to offer the forearm Avalokiteshvara painting that I'd made up to His Holiness. And His Holiness was so kind. When he turned it around, he saw that there was some writing and he started to read it. And then when he read it halfway through, I folded my hands and I said, please don't read it now. Please read it later because there are so many people waiting, but I thank you so much. And I remember during the teaching and also during that time when I offered the Avalokiteshvara, I could not stop crying. It was very difficult for me to control my emotions. I, I can't explain why. All I know was during the whole teaching for three and a half hours, I felt tears streaming down my face nonstop. I felt I was in front of a person who is not ordinary. This is what I felt in my little child's mind. So after offering the picture to His Holiness, it was very emotional. I was so moved and I was so incredibly overwhelmed by His Holiness's presence. And I pray that I may never be separated from His Holiness, never be separated from His presence, never. And um, so consecutively as His Holiness visited the United States, there are other many great masters in the United States, such as the great Dromo Geshe Rinpoche in New York, the great Chongla Rato Rinpoche in New York, the great Kenso Los Santachin Rinpoche in New Jersey, the great Geshe Sopa, in Wisconsin. The great master and Mahasita Geshe Tsurum Geltinla in Tupten Darjeeling, Los Angeles still is there. And very often the great Mahasita Lama Yeshi and Lama Sopa would be in Vajrapani in Northern California. There are many great masters. And then I also heard that there was the great Zasat Rinpoche in Canada. And all these lamas worked very hard and worked very, very tirelessly to teach Dharma and explain Dharma with no ulterior motive in the United States. And so from different places and great lamas in Europe, great visiting lamas like His Holiness Kabjasar Rinpoche, who visited the United States a few times at the invitation of Geshe Tsurim Gelsen and Lama Yeshi. So there were great masters in Europe, great masters in America. So you can see that Tibetan Buddhism was starting to take a foothold. But it was still seen as foreign and strange. And it was still seen as odd for European or American at that time to take on Tibetan Buddhism was quite odd because 
They have their own culture and they have their own faith. But these great tireless lamas, and many that I have not mentioned, there are so many, have tireless, tirelessly worked and spread the Dharma. So, but each time His Holiness came, there was special, something special. There are many high lamas in Tibetan tradition, many high lamas, not just high in rank or hierarchy, but high in attainments. But as special as His Holiness, who can transcend borders, cultures, religions, people, who can meet scientists, doctors, teachers, lawyers, ministers, presidents, prime ministers, the Pope, Mother Teresa, and ordinary people like me, and that it was perfectly natural for His Holiness to meet them and talk to them and have dialogue, have interfaith services, scientific dialogue. He'd be perf perfect in every situation. And I realized that His Holiness, although extremely learned, very advanced in his meditations, very, very monkly, holding his vows perfectly, a perfect Hinayana monk on the outside, a perfect Mahayana practitioner on the inside, and secretly, an attained tantric Mahasiddhi, Mahasiddha, perfectly attained Mahasiddha with great cities. And for incarnation after incarnation after incarnation after incarnation, come back in perfect form to teach and, and share the Dharma. And in this day and age, to transcend all borders and cultures and people and races and thoughts and education, to be able to relate to everyone personally was a great boost to Tibetan Buddhism's growth in the world. The respect that people have for His Holiness, the respect that people have for His knowledge and His down-to-earth, His directness, and His incredible hard work and His incredible dedication to peace, even culminating in His Holiness winning the Nobel Peace Prize, touched millions of people's lives in the world today. I feel, I personally feel, it is my opinion that Tibetan Buddhism is well respected, not seen as a cult, is a valid religion. It is growing very fast and it is especially accepted among the intellectuals and the educated. I think its acceptance is due solely to the kindness of His Holiness, the 14 Dalai Lama. I think it is His Holiness's hard work. I think it is His Holiness's down-to-earth approach and His non-stop touring, His non-stop teaching, and His non-stop effort into meeting, talking, speaking, dialoguing, interfaith with so many people in so many countries that Tibetan Buddhism has a very good, logical, clear, sound, and authentic, genuine basis, genuine respect from, from the world due to His Holiness. I think we Tibetan Lamas, myself, my given name is Denzin Soba. Denzin Sova was the name given to me by His Holiness when I took ordination from him in December 1987. My reincarnated name is Tsem of Gandhin Sharte Monastery. But we Tibetan Lamas, myself included, have a place to go in the world and are in demand and people request us to give teachings, and people re and respect us, and people sponsor us and take care of us, and people, in fact, assist us in so many ways. Yes, I think the individual high lamas and, and geshis and teachers and masters all have worked very hard, but I think that we couldn't have grown as big 
or be as well known or be as well accepted if it wasn't for His Holiness's work. And I feel very much that we Tibetan Lamas, someone like myself, can go to different countries and be recognized in my robes, be accepted. And whether they actually are Buddhists or not, but they know about Tibetan Buddhism and they respect and that the Tibetan Lamas have a place to go is solely due to the kindness of His Holiness, the 14 Dalai Lama. So my point is, we have so many things to thank His Holiness and to be appreciative to His Holiness for. We have so many things, many things, that if I was to mention it can go on for days. But the one thing I would like to mention is that Tibetan Buddhism is growing in the world. It has prestige. It is respected. It's accepted by the elite. It's accepted by the stars. It's accepted by the ordinary people. It's accepted by the professionals. And it's growing, becoming stronger, and it's benefiting millions of people around the world. I think it's due largely in part by His Holiness's prestige, His Holiness's logic, and His acceptance in the world. And I think His Holiness is accepted and loved and respected by the world because His Holiness relates to everybody as a human being with a kind heart, with depth, in-depth knowledge of Buddhism. I think he is one of the greatest scholars alive today on Tibetan Buddhism or Buddhism in general. To me, when I see His Holiness the Dalai Lama, I think that if Buddha Shakyamuni was alive, it would be that kind of impact. I think seeing His Holiness the Dalai Lama today is equivalent to seeing Buddha Shakyamuni 2,500 years, years ago. So I'm fine. I'm teaching Tibetan Buddhism. I'm not a scholar. I don't know much, but I am teaching Tibetan Buddhism. And I have friends and students and supporters and help. And when I say Tibetan Buddhism, there's no doubt about that. Because that comes from the kindness of His Holiness and His prestige. We all owe quite a lot to His Holiness the Dalai Lama. We owe quite a lot. What we owe Him is beyond words, beyond comprehension. Everything stems from His Holiness. And the Tibetan faith growing, its prestige growing, comes strictly from His Holiness. And what I like about His Holiness very much is, although He is a fully attained master, He is humble, He doesn't play on that, He doesn't show off, He's simple, He always manifests as a wonderful monk, He helps, He gives, and his whole life has been totally devoted to the growth of Tibetan Buddhism, among many other works that he does. I am overwhelmed by his holiness, overwhelmed. I have received many teachings and initiations from his holiness, the Dalai Lama. And if his holiness ever comes to your city, or if it ever comes to your area, or you have a chance to attend, you must attend his holiness's teachings. It is the same, if I, if I say so, in my humbleness, in my humble thoughts, it is the same as attending Shakyamuni's teachings. No one in this world has more knowledge, knowledge than Dalai Lama. And not only His Holiness is a repository of all the ancient holy teachings of Lord Buddha that has been preserved in Tibet, but He's also a master of Sutra and Tantra, and also, he is a master lineage holder of all the four valid traditions of Tibetan Buddhism, which is Nyingma, Gagyu, Sakya, and Gelu. He is a master lineage holder of all four. We have everything. We are all right. Tibetan Buddhism is growing due to solely His Holiness's kindness. I pray every day, as in our center every day, His Holiness may live very, very long. And His Holiness, 
actions may grow, and that what he wishes for and what he dedicates for will be fulfilled without any obstacles. I'm indebted to His Holiness, and if I may say so with humility and with some shame that I am a lowly student of His Holiness, the 14 Dalai Lama, but I will serve His Holiness by holding my vows, by practicing Guru devotion, by doing my commitments and prayers and sadhanas, and by teaching Dharma to the best I can, and to transform my mind as much as possible. So I dedicate the activities in my center to His Holiness the 14 Dalai Lama, and I also dedicate my website to His Holiness the 14 Dalai Lama. May His Holiness live very long. May His wishes come true. And may we never be separated from His Holiness in this life, in all future lives. Gangri rewe korwe shingam dir, pendang dewa malu jungwe ne, chene zi wang densen gyaso yi, shabe side bardu deng gyur ji. In this land, walled round by snowy mountains, you are the source of all happiness and good goodness. Lord Chene Zik Denzen Gyatso, Your Holiness the Dalai Lama, fix your lotus feet firmly until samsara ends. <laughs>